So Redford Redford again, he's, a, he's an optimist, and he writes these very optimistic histories of the world, but they're not naive histories of the world either. Um, historians are really good at finding problems. Like most people, we're really good at finding problems. We're not so good at finding solutions. And unfortunately, we put a lot of emphasis, or we put a lot of praise, I guess, on people who are critical. So in other words, when we come across a student who's, who is, um, who's sarcastic, for example, sit, um, we had, you don't have to go any further than just watching, new, uh, watching television, watch some TV shows, watch movies. We oftentimes have that, that, that character who's sarcastic and they're, so therefore they're smart. There's nothing smart about sarcasm. It's easy to find problems with, with, uh, with the world around us. It's easy to find a problem with the desk that you're sitting in. It's a very difficult thing to, to build a desk for someone to sit in though, to design something like that. And so historians who, who write these things about history talking about how horrible things were and how terrible things are and there are all of these problems and all that, well, that's really easy to do. To see the really positive outcomes of things, though, that's very challenging. Not just from a, from a descriptive point of view, but also from a, um, almost from a, from a spiritual point of view. In other words, um, it's, it's, if I said to you something like, okay, the Holocaust, oh, horrible stuff. Okay, so now, um, write an essay that talks about all the positive aspects of the Holocaust. All of the positive things that came from it. That's very hard for us to do. It almost feels like we're being irreverent towards history when we do that. But, I mean, it, uh, the events have happened. So, not much we can do about that. But what we can do is take a, a decidedly optimistic point of view about what's happened. And again, not to ignore the, the negative, not to ignore the evil, but instead to use the evil, to use the, the, the bad stuff of history to propel us forward in some really good way. Um, you ever see, oh, I'm tempted to start talking about, about, about Russia and Ukraine, but I imagine that almost none of us really know what the hell's going on over there. And I mean, I, I, I have a couple of friends, I have one friend I'm thinking of right now, incredibly brave, he posted something on Facebook, he changed his profile picture and said, I stand with Ukraine. So Putin better watch it, right? <laughs> People are now changing their Facebook profiles to let, it, to let the world know that we stand with, with, with them. <clears throat> but the crisis of our times isn't that we don't have it good. This is part of the problem. Um, we, uh, we, we, in fact, we have it so good that whenever anything goes wrong, we think we have it so bad. In other words, when the Wi-Fi goes down, we sit there, or we're, when we're in this room and we can't get signal, like, oh my god, I can't get signal, it's so frustrating. Do you realize that you usually can get signal, though? 95% of the time that the wiring in this building, for some reason or whatever, interferes with, 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 with reception, I get that. But my god, you're holding a device in your hand that allows you to connect the whole of human history. It, it, it's a device that allows you to connect the whole of human knowledge. It's a device that allows you to connect with any other human being on the face of the planet who also has a device. And we get pissed off because our reception is slow in here. <coughs> you realize that? We get pissed off when we go to, our, to, a, to a restaurant or go to a fast food place and they don't have the thing that we want. You know, we have 60 other things. Yeah, but you don't have that one thing I want. Yeah. Oh my god, what is... You know, when you look at society around you, we, we have roads, we have buildings. If you want food, you just go down and get it. If, if you want to, uh, if, you don't, if you need money, you just go the other direction. Or maybe you go to the exact same place and ask them to, to, for a job. All of these things are, are around us in this society, and it's, it is so fine-tuned, and it's so incredibly complex, that not one of us could possibly understand it. And yet... When we find one thing wrong with it, we complain about it. That doesn't mean that there's nothing to complain about. That's true. But that doesn't mean that therefore everything sucks because a couple of things go wrong. An example I use is, um, depending on how far away you guys live from campus, how many, on, your way to, on, on your way to school every day, how many cars do you suppose you interact with? <clears throat> 20. 20? There's only 20 cars on the road? You must live across the street. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like park? Or no, like just like when, you, when, you're, when you're driving down the street. Shit, probably like 80. <laughs> 80. You still must live pretty close. 
probably interact with 100, 200 cars, 300 cars maybe. We don't even really realize it because there's, there, we're just kind of used to the scenery of that. And you can even, even if you include parked cars in there as well. Now, if one person cuts you off, we get so pissed off. Oh my god, people are so stupid. No one can drive. That's one car out of 100, 200. So that's 1%, half of a percent. But it's that 1%, that half of a percent that just bothers us. Why? Because we're so incredibly spoiled that we're just used to everything working the way it's supposed to. So that when things don't work the way they're supposed to, that's what stands out to us. We don't even notice that everything around us is a, is a, is a goddamn miracle. It really is. Like these lights, anybody know how these lights work? All we know is some, I come and I go, boop, and I turn the lights on. And then when the lights don't turn on, we're like, come on, oh, what is it? Oh. Dude, there's electricity up here, man. You know, we have, everything around us is powered. And that doesn't mean that we don't therefore go find the problem, but how many times in your life have you gone in, pressed the button, and the lights didn't turn on? That's incredibly rare. Look at all the times in your life that you've done it, and, you, and, it, and every time you've turned the faucet, the water does come out. You know, the fact that, that we have shelter, the fact that we have all of these things, and it doesn't mean that, that therefore when things, that when we lose our shelter, the lights don't work or the water's not running, that that doesn't therefore provide an inconvenience, but that's really what it is. It's an inconvenience. It is an existential collapse of life around us, but we oftentimes treat it like this, to the point where we have to wait a few extra seconds to get an answer from Google for something that would have taken us hours of research a generation before, two generations before, to go down to the library, find a book, make sure it's authoritative, be able to cross-reference it with something else. I mean, and now we're pissed off because it takes us a few extra seconds to, because the reception in this room sucks. The problem is not that we don't have it good, but we do have it extremely good, even with the problems that we do have. In fact, as I was talking about in another classroom, think about this. What are we arguing and fighting about today? We're pissed off and we're fighting and we're calling each other names because we're trying to figure out which bathroom people use. <laughs> that, th th these are our massive problems. You know, right now Ukraine's being invaded, yeah, Russia. They've got some problems, but man, what pronoun you call them when we, when, we, when we talk to them? That's our big fight. <laughs> You know? And then it is, I'm not saying that that's not important. I'm also not saying that it is important. What I am saying is that compared to, imagine if, imagine in Ukraine if they could say, can we have those problems? <laughs> can you deal with Russia and we can have your problems? Yeah. It's an incredible thing if we look at, and even just the system that we have right now, whatever your politics, I guess, the last several years can, can teach us a lot. If you think that Trump was the worst thing that, that could possibly happen to the world, and you lost sleep at night about it. An amazing thing happened. Four years came and went, and the system still stands. <coughs> if you think that, that Biden is the, is the worst thing that could possibly happen to the world, we're now, what, a year and a half, almost two years in, and the system still stands. In other words, these, these things are so resilient that they can, they, can, they can withstand almost anything. It's an incredible thing. So the problem is, that, is not that we don't have it good, he says. The crisis is that we can't come up with anything better. Because then if I ask you, okay, so um, how, you know, what should we do for the, for the signal in here, the Wi-Fi signal you know, in this room? Well, we should, I don't know, make it better. How? Well, we should get rid of all, this, all the wiring, therefore, then that, that's interfering with the signal. Okay, and what do you suppose that getting rid of all that wiring will do? It'll stop making the lights work. It'll stop allowing us to have electricity to power the Wi-Fi that we would be trying to tap into in this room. Oh. Well, then we should just knock down the building and rebuild it. That doesn't solve the problem. It makes it way more expensive. And then, of course, doing that creates other problems. So then where do we have classes in, in, in the next, over the course of the next few years it takes to build the buildings? We have classes outside. Well, we should just find another building. Okay, so we go find another building. Well, there aren't any other buildings for us to be using. So should we then get, therefore go get uh, those trailers and start having classes in trailers? <laughs> yes. Okay, where do we park them? In the parking lot, where the cars go. I don't know. <laughs> you can see how many moving parts there are, though, for something as simple as, can we get a stronger Wi-Fi signal in this room? The fact that we have it at all means that we have solved a whole bunch of problems. But then there's a, a discouraging part of it. 
there might just not be a better way to do it. It might just be the best way that we can right now. And that's discouraging to us because we want things to be perfect. Because if we accept that sometimes things aren't perfect, well then we can no longer criticize the Wi-Fi. We can no longer criticize fill in the blank of, of any other of any other area of life. Yeah. And then a, real, a really strange thing might happen, which would be really uncomfortable for us then, if we realize that things are, are are as good as maybe as good as they possibly can be. Well then, gosh, now it's almost like we have to have gratitude for it, and then we have to stop criticizing so many things and actually feel pretty good about the way that things are and appreciate what we have. But that's bullshit, right? Who wants to do that? Instead, let's criticize everything that everybody else has ever done because they did it differently from what we would have done. It's natural to want to change things up a little bit. Like I've said, you know, if you go and, and get, a, get an apartment, <clears throat> the first thing that you're probably going to want to do in your first apartment is bring in, you know, uh, is, um, is furnish it the way that you want it to be. You'll go get, I don't know, maybe you're driving down the street and you see somebody who puts a futon out on the sidewalk. So you go get that futon and you bring it in. And then, you know, and like, oh, this is, this is my first piece of furniture. And maybe someone's going to be like, oh, you got somebody else's futon? Who knows what's happened on that futon? Oh, that's gross. And you're like, no, it's fine. I sprayed it with some Febreze. <laughs> it doesn't kill germs. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's my futon now. That's my first piece of furniture. Yeah, but that piece of furniture you have sucks. It doesn't matter. My futon. My piece of furniture. And then you start to populate the, the apartment with all the stuff that's yours. So now the apartment can, can scream you. Even if it, even if it's trash, it's your trash. Now, what happens if you decide to move out, and you have like a, a younger brother or sister or whatever who says, "Oh, can I move into your apartment?" And you're like, "Yeah, go ahead." So then they move in, all your stuff is there, um, but it's their apartment now, and you tell them, "Yeah, everything is yours. I got something else going on." What are they going to do? Can't move in. Maybe get rid of some of the furniture. Maybe keep some of it. Maybe get rid of some of it. Maybe move some things around. And there's a good chance that when you go visit, you'll be like, this isn't my place. This isn't, what did you do that for? Oh, I didn't like your futon. What? That was the first thing? <laughs> this is what the world looks like. This is what the world looks like. Older generation comes in. They, 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 you know, your grandparents came in, whatever, into, into the world. And they, they got rid of your great-great-grandparents' uh, futon. They brought in their own. <laughs> Your great great grandparents were like, what, what is this world? What, why did you change things? Because this is how things should be. Would that crap be futon? Uh huh. Oh my god, what's wrong with you kids these days? And then your parents moved into, your, moved into that place. And your parents, I don't know, put a lava lamp in the corner or something. I don't know. And then your grandparents were like, well, why, why would you put that there? It makes the place look like crap. It's my lava lamp. Oh god, what, this is what we do in the world. Newer, younger generations move into the world. We move some things around. The older generation complains about it, especially about the music. And then, we, and then they complain because things aren't what they used to be. Things have never been what they used to be. They did the exact same things when they were young. They moved into the world, and they started moving some things around. Did they make it better or worse? Yes. Yes. Some things are better. Some things are worse. This is kind of that progress. What you hope for is that at the end of your generation, you've done more good and, you, and you've, done, you've done more things better than you did things worse. But there's no doubt every generation has things that are better and worse. The problem is that when, we, when we're the ones moving into the world, the problem can come in if we think that we're the, that we're the only ones who have done it right and that everybody else has done it wrong. Like I was talking yesterday about, last year we saw these, the, the riots and the protests and everything, and I saw so many people posting things on social media about how we're the first generation to actually do something about, about, about police misconduct. No other generation has done that. I sat there going like, really, dude? <laughs> you're the, you, and I actually messaged some, some, some people and I said, really, you're the first generation? Do you know zero about history? You remember the whole, you know, there was a guy a few years ago, well, what was his name? Oh, what the hell was his name? He had a dream. Oh. Oh yeah, that's the guy, Martin Luther King Jr. That's right, the guy we read about in the history books. But he did nothing at all about, about police misconduct. Wasn't he about civil rights? Yes, he was largely about police misconduct as well. And you can go through for generations and generations and find all kinds of people who have done things about it. You can go back to my generation. Uh, there was, there's, any of you guys Sublime fans? If you guys like the band Sublime, well, geez, I hope you know the song. 
There's a whole damn song about how there were riots all over the country because of police brutality. And in my generation of riot over it, I've been in two riots. They're both a lot of fun. Don't ever be in a riot. Damn, it's a lot of fun. But don't be in a riot. You know, the idea is that they come along thinking, we're the only ones who have ever done something before. It's like, no, you're not. You're absolutely not. And then they're, and then that, and that's problematic because then if you come in with that idea, you take on this sense of moral superiority. In other words, we're better than everybody else. Therefore, what everybody else has said should not even be listened to. Because you guys are backwards and screwed up and you didn't do anything about it. But we did. Okay? And there's an entire arrogance that goes along with that. Because then, of course, what you're naturally going to think from there. Whatever we do is going to be right. Whatever everybody else does is not just wrong, but it's evil. And it's backwards. And you just need to get out of the way. <clears throat> then you lose wisdom. Because one thing that older people can tell you is how to live in the world. <laughs> you know, whether you like them or not, your grandparents have lived for a very long time. And, and they know what it takes to live in the world. And just because Facebook got invented doesn't mean all of a sudden they would, they would die in a modern world. In fact, if anything, the lack of it might keep them alive. Yeah. For like 20 minutes ago, you could raise your hand. <laughs> I was, actually, I was like thinking about how like the biggest mistake also is we do is we memory of whole things. Like if, you, if, like, if you read anything or anything in history is that the next generation will memory of whatever happened before. Like this is, this has happened so many times. Like the, the Ukraine invasion, this is, this is all a repetition. Oh, there was a pandemic in 2004 and there was also war in 2004, and then here we are again. Mm -hmm. And and what nobody realizes. Say, say, that, say that one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> um, the thing that we don't realize is that we memory hold everything, and we don't learn from it. We just kind of just once once this. Um, okay, think about in 2004. There was a there was a pandemic, the SARS, and there was a fear of, of war with you know Iraq and Afghanistan. That did happen, but it wasn't to the lengths of world war. And so here we are again, like we were in 2004, scared, um, fearful of what's going to happen. And funny enough, that's when we were all born. So it's kind of like, um, we're just going to what our parents um, got through. And what happened? They didn't fucking die. They didn't all get slaughtered, all people dying on the ground. No, it's just a repetition. It's how things happen in history. And what, what a lot of people don't get is that with so much information now, everything that's going on right now, we haven't progressed. We haven't progressed um, critically, um, critically with our thinking because literally three days ago, people were complaining about the convoy. People were worrying about the pandemic. Now, we're, what are we worrying about? War. It's just it just happens like that. Do you guys see that by the way? No, oh, sorry, it's over here by the door. Anyway, oh, bye bye, Dad. <laughs> Do you feel like you just watch the news? That's what watching the news is like, isn't it? Look at that. Be terrified of that. Oh no, it's over by the door now. What the hell is that? No, don't worry about that now. It's over there. Stay scared. Stay tuned in. 